I be feeling like I'm about to fall. <laughs> Yes, yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Back in again. Yeah, 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 episode three. The hottest nigga in the world. Tribe called culture. Really Absolutely. Subscribe to the tribe. Like subscribe here, bro. You late? Go on here. Subscribe to the tribe, man. Come on. Skillet. My dog be skillet over here, man. You know what I'm saying? Shit, it's a lot going on, bro. Been a lot of this podcast talk. Tribe called culture. So we got hit with it. This is. Try to call culture, man. We curate cultural conversation. You know, y'all already know. Man. Yes, sir. Episode three, man. We finna three peak. Hey, we finna three peak this month. It happens. You know what I'm saying? Splash Brothers. Still in here. Still in here. We ain't gone after episode one and two now. We still at it, hey. man. We still on y'all ass. <laughs> still got my foot on your neck. But Absolutely. hey, check this out, man. Yes, There's been a lot going on, man. Yeah, yeah. Streets been talking. Internet been talking. You know, the culture going crazy hey. right now. So, shit. I'm fucking with it. We're just gonna jump right into it. Yes, sir. So like we always like to start the show, uh, sh like we always like to start the show out with, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Currently in the culture, this what's happening. So this what this what everybody been buzzing about. Beep, 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 beep. You feel me? <laughs> Currently in the culture. Let's get straight to the headline. All right? Yes, sir. Currently in the culture, future. Okay. Let's talk about it, man. Future dropped a new album with Metro Boom out the whole album. Executive produced and all the beats produced Metro Boom. Yes, sir. All right. Have you heard it? Mm-mm. Okay. Mm. Only song I've heard is the intro and the joint with Kendrick because of all the internet buzz. Kyle, we don't trust you. Like, yes, sir. Young Metro don't trust you. Right, yeah, like right, that right. tag, yeah, that shit too. We don't trust you is the name of the project. Yes, sir. Just came out a few days ago, man. Okay. Got the internet buzzing. The main, the main thing the internet is buzzing about though is not necessarily <laughs> nothing Future said. Shout uh, out to Future. Yeah, I'm a yeah, Future yeah. fan. I'm a Future. Are you I was excited to see him. Uh. I could take a leave. I don't think I don't he like sucks. every song he makes, me personally, uh -huh. but he got enough of them that I rock with where I would say I'm a future mm. fan. I would say this though, what's crazy is so I was everybody knows I was in the military. Mm. So I was in Iraq from twenty ten to twenty eleven. I did like thirteen months over there. Okay. So my NCO or my LPO, that means the person, your manager, your boss, he was, back then he was talking about future. He said he's gonna be the future. And I was like, ah. But he was right. And I was damn sure wrong. So I get to uh I think his name was uh McCray. IT1 McCray. So salute to IT1 McCray. Probably never see this, but that's cool. Most of the artists that came out in that whole swag era yeah. of like 2009 ish or whatever, a lot of them ain't. That's what I'm saying. Today. See? So he did stand the yeah, test. Yeah, yeah. If you just did But time. okay, you ain't heard it. Do you plan to listen to it? Mm -mm. Don't even plan to listen. I don't check for future only because, and this is this is my preference, not everybody else's. Mm -hmm. I'm not a big fan. I don't care what you what you rap about. I ain't knocking nobody for rapping my drugs. Mm -hmm. But I don't like the fact that he raps about a lot of that stuff, but he has on record said, I don't even do most of this yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. And I think that, not to sound like the old nigga in the room, but I'm just being honest. If you're going to rap about those things, I'm not saying you got to, if I say I kill 30 niggas, I got to kill 30 niggas. But just for you to rap about all these coding and all this dirty spray, blah, blah, blah. And it has been a really, and yes, other topics of rap have That's been. That's his whole brand. Yeah, but don't be doing that. And then a lot of the young cats was really buying into that shit. Yeah. And I just don't like the imagery. Maybe because I'm a dad, I don't know. I don't really care for being that influential and Hurting our community for lack of better word. I know it's cliche, corny, whatever. I, I can understand that though, man. Yeah. Especially if you ain't doing, you ain't doing none of them. But we come from the same era, so it yeah. is still. When you think about just the way they glorify being a drug user. Yeah, today, what happened to the glorifying a drug deal? Not that that ain't good either. Yeah, but yeah, I'm just but saying yeah, that's just where we came yeah. from, and then this is like a big, yeah, but a you big went, shift away. Well, said now, nah, and he had a lot to do with that. I would say. Um, How you glorify the, 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 we went from goddamn, at least the crack boy, the dope boys was getting money. Yo. Now we, from metaphorically speaking, we glorifying the crack heads. I'm which I feel a way when, uh, just I the, get it at the end of the day, it's all entertainment. Yeah, but yeah. at the same time, when you pushing it as hard as he push it and that's like your whole brand. Yeah. And you ain't even really, that ain't your lifestyle. With at your all. Influence <laughs> and all your followers yeah. to live there thinking they being like you, it is irresponsible. Yeah. Now, can it still be entertaining? Oh, yes. yeah, yeah. But also, Future 40 now. A lot of low Is key, it? that nigga's 40. And like, oh, damn, a lot of rappers, once they start hit to that level, you kind of. The content direction changes a little bit yeah. if you still active. Some yeah. of them don't even still be active. So, 
Yeah. I just don't ever see a time where Future ain't still on the same. Yeah, Jay pivoted. I mean, he still talk about selling dope, but it's, yeah. it's in a more sophisticated, mature way. He talk about, yeah. I mean, he is married. He got kids. He got a family. Right. So some of it is like Ross. He's, he's still right about moving dope, but at the same time, it's, I mean, it's always been it's sophisticated. But maturity, got, though. Yeah, it's grown dope boy rap. Yeah. Yeah. Even Jeezy shit is more right. grown dope boy rap. That's all I'm saying. Well, I scanned through the project, man. How'd you feel? And you're a fan of Future. I'm a fan of Future, based more so off his back catalog than recent shit, though, mm -hmm. I will say that. Do we still got it in him? Yeah. But he lazy on a lot of songs where it had potential to be great. But lazy as far as flow, melody, what, what was kind of like, eh? The flow is normally what carries Future, flow and delivery. Yeah, man, so man, sometimes man, just too. the content of it. The part that you thought was catchy enough to be the repeating part to be like, eh. Oh, he hit once and leave it alone. Yeah, it just, I don't really know how to describe it. Sometimes just because when you reach a certain level of success, mm -hmm. then your confidence slash some people will look at it as arrogance kind of gets in with like anything I'm, I'm mumbling this bitch mm -hmm. is hard. Or anything that I just murmur right. under my breath is <laughs> gonna go. And, and nobody ain't in here got enough power for me to say, right. for me to trust them when they say, nah, that ain't it, bro. So, oh, they just like Kanye. Me. And like, once you hit a certain yeah. level of success, it's like. You got Yes Man, and that's it. Yeah. I feel. And so you don't got that that thing in your brain no more, like, hey, bro, nah, you might not wanna say that like that. You might wanna revise that, do that. Okay, like let this. me ask so this, though. Like, nah, that's it. Whose responsibility, responsibility is that? Is that the artist's responsibility to keep honest, transparent people around them or is it the people that's been around them is it their responsibility to be like look they ain't it not shit Both, on it, but it's the it. artist's responsibility not to let whatever level of success you had influence your ability to decipher whether this is good enough to keep and put out or this ain't it you know what i mean yeah. you can't let your level of success dictate that oh uh, got you, you still got gotta you. have you that have same to control the ego. yeah you still gotta have that same what you want to call it that same thing that judged it in your mind you. when you was doing it back then as you do now after all these records sold, all these times platinum later, you gotta that's mm. the artist's responsibility to maintain that. Cool down, down. No, I feel that. I mean, yeah, because it's it does take a certain amount of almost self awareness to be like, look, I'm that dude, but at the same time, but some of that to me comes from how hungry you are. Mm. We got another topic we're going to talk about later. I, I'm going to apply that to him as well. But and then I, you got two different sides of the fan base. You got the side of the fan base that want to see your growth and maturity and mm -hmm. you expanding your sound as an artist. And then you got the other side that hate when people do that and they want you to stay at what they yeah. known you for and what they like you for. Right. It's like what Jay said. You want the old Jay, buy my old Jay. Right. Old shit. So every artist got to find that balance yeah. of... I want the people that like me for my old shit to still have what they like, but at the same time, I mm -hmm. want the people that's looking to see artists growth to yeah. be. Yeah, I need a little bit. You of know what I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right, so Metro Booming. I love his production. I it's love his fire. production too. <laughs> it's I fire. I love his production, man. I don't. I used to have him higher on my list than I do nowadays. Okay. Uh, like him early, him and Future early when they okay. was first on. You feel like Metro less hungry too? Or just repetitive? Nah, I ain't gonna say it's repetitive because he like that Spider Man soundtrack and stuff. I was impressed. Oh, by he did the um the song I'm Not Scared. That last the, uh, uh, Spider Man across the Spider Verse. Oh, the second one. Yeah. What song he did over there? He produced the whole album. Yeah. I, it sounds bad, but I haven't listened to the second because I didn't really hear about the soundtrack for the second one. The first oh, soundtrack was fire though. The second one got some jazz. Oh, it's tough. All right, I'm gonna check that out then. Yeah, shout out to Metro Bowling, man. Yes, shout out to produ all the producers out there going crazy. Mm. Uh, yeah, man. So, future Metro Boom and we don't trust you. That's been the talk of the internet, the talk of the streets. Okay. If you ain't heard it yet, go check it out. Drop in the comments if y'all think it was mid or if it was fire <laughs> or if it was classic or trash. <laughs> Any of those words that y'all using these <laughs> days. Before we transition, let me ask you this: What do you think about people saying it's either trash or it's classic? Do you think that's too? Too I extreme. think it's hilarious that it ain't no in between. It yeah. got to be trash or it got to be great. It can't just be, yeah, it was cool. Yeah. You know I mean, I take was, a six. All right, for the moment, but it ain't going to be just be dope next year. Like, Ooh. people don't want to say that. It's either dope as hell right away or that's what it And it's popular as hell to be one of the first ones online <laughs> posting, but that shit mid. But that new episode to be a milk mid as hell, bro. You ain't even tripping. All right, so before we get our future completely, <laughs> we like I was it. saying, more so 
more so the talk and the hype around his album came from a feature that people wasn't expecting more so than anything he said on there. Okay. And that was Kendrick Lamar, the great mm -hmm. Kendrick Lamar. Super dope. He uh, got a verse on that song like that. Yeah. And shout out to all the Lil Wayne fans that recognized that beat when they heard it's the beat on there that they recreated, modernized, <laughs> but it's from the Lil Wayne mixtape era. It and is. the real Lil Wayne fans <laughs> caught that and were like, okay. And that hey. probably, that little bit of nostalgia made them like the song more when they heard that. Right. So shout out to whoever idea that was, if that was Metro idea, whoever. But um, okay. anyway, yes, sir. Kendrick verse on the song. Mm hmm. He on his uh, beat my chest like I gotta let these niggas know mm -hmm. I'm still him yeah. type of energy. Yeah. He had a line in there about the first person shooters that let everybody right, know he said, that he yeah. was he going something towards. Like, ain't no big three, it's just Drake, big me yeah. or something like that. Ain't no yeah. big three, nigga. It just big me. That yeah. was hard. Yeah, that, that was hard. That, 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 that was hard. That was hard. That was I like that. So, yes, sir. you heard the verse. What's your thoughts on the verse? I felt, <laughs> I hate to say it, you just said, the verse was mid besides a couple lines about <laughs> the big three. It was big. getting no vibe. Yeah, so because... So if it didn't have that line in there about the big three... It'd be regular three, than the mother, mother. It'd be a regular ass verse. Yeah, because for me, we know what Kendrick comes with. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't... I don't need it to be super woke and introspective. Well, we know that nigga might spit two lines and it got 12 entendres in that bitch. It was just cool. And now, then... Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I do respect the fact that even though we know how crazy he can go yeah. lyrically... He don't always try to, he try to fit the song that he on. Yeah. Or he ain't want to just bar you crazy and not fit what Future did on the whole song before you heard his part. So I respect his ability to kind of make Excuse it fit into the vibe of the song, but at the same time with you on, it's just, if you really just... Especially if you're going to take the time to quote unquote diss him. I don't need, a lot of people like, boy, Cole got to respond. I don't really feel like he was dissing Cole. I feel like he was more so dissing Drake because it's, for one, it's Drake's song. Cole didn't say really much. Well, neither one of them really said nothing bad in first person shooter. But on top of that, Drake didn't really come with no heat to me. Once the beat switched on first person shooter to Drake's part, that shit, he could have cut that song off. Yeah, I ain't like Drake on that at <laughs> yeah. all, bro. And it's Drake's song. I like Drake, but I ain't like Drake on that yeah. song at all. And so for me, also on top of that, when you get to go second, this is like a battle rap. It's it's almost like a fight. If somebody hits you, they stealing you and don't knock your ass out, and you get to go in, it's almost the same concept. How I get to go second, and I don't really hit you with no big time haymakers. Mm -hmm. So I don't th I don't even think it was realistically this in my opinion. I think it's more so like, hey, I'm still that. It was a braggadocious verse, yeah. but I don't necessarily think it was a fuck you Drake or fuck you Cole. That's just me. I don't really understand what the. What the static I, I, is about, about, I mean, but supposed to be between them, like, especially between Kendrick and Cole, like, I don't, they that's always what I don't them showing each other love. Yeah, they're respect. supposed to do a project together. Right, so I don't really understand where that... So do you think it's know, real man. beef? I don't think it's real beef. I think it's more just competitiveness I think so for too. the sport of rap, which I can appreciate. Mm -hmm. Where at the same time, I don't know, I guess it worked. It worked for a future and it worked against them. It worked for you that for everybody's future? so hype about this Kendrick verse mm -hmm. that they got them talking about your album mm -hmm. more than they would have. But at the same time, they talking about what he did on Kendrick, your album more than anything did. you did. So <laughs> yeah. it's like, you get to reap the benefits of all the hype that they yeah. giving his verse, but at the same time, it takes away from what you displayed in your art yeah. on there. So Because that kind of song is getting the replay, sword, right? not the album. Exactly. <laughs> Double-edged sword. I mean... So, and then I noticed that if you look at the track list, it don't say any of the features' names. Nah, yeah. It that's just that's say been a popular thing between. with some of them. Why do people product. do that? What's the move behind I don't know it? why they feel like the hidden feature, like... It's supposed know. to get you more interested, or...? I, honestly, I don't fully understand the concept behind it, but I've been seeing, like, Travis Scott. It's a few artists that do that, and just, yeah. like, you're just going to listen to it, not knowing who's on there, and be surprised when you hear the feature type shit. I mean, it's not a bad look, but I think... I think if you don't have that that... That avid, mm, I got to hear that future or yeah. whatever album it is. Nobody, sometimes features will make you listen to the song mm. versus the actual artist out. Right. Like it might, I don't know, I'm going to say Rapper B. Rapper B might be cool, but if you're not a fan of Rapper B, but you're a fan of Rapper D, mm. and you see he's featured on there, right. you may go to that exactly song. Exactly. Like, so that pull those fans For in. an up-and-coming artist yeah. like myself, it definitely helps for you to list that feature yeah. artist because anybody that just follows that artist, they coming too. That song coming on the radar because yeah. y'all side by side credited mm -hmm. as opposed to 
If you just got him on the song and I never listen to him, then his fans don't know he on there. So Until somebody hear about it. I can never capitalize off <laughs> yeah. that fully, you know what I mean? I think it applies for even big time artists. Yeah. Because like I said, I'm not a Future fan, but I did go listen to the one with Kendrick. Mm -hmm. But when I first went, I said, damn, where the fuck the one Kendrick at? Mm -hmm. And then I had to, you know, when you see like an article on the other big yeah. time, they said it was the name of the song. I said, oh, okay. And I clicked that right. one. I ain't pretty play from the beginning. I play played the first song. It's a strange new thing that they've been doing with that. I don't know. Okay, no. so... Do you expect Cole or Drake or both of them to respond? If I was Cole, I wouldn't respond. And I think Drake is in that fucked up peer, that place in hip hop where he's the top. Mm -hmm. Whether you like it or hate it, love it, whatever. Yeah. He's the one. It's, it goes, whether people want to agree or not, it goes Drake and then Dr Drake is one. And then Cole and Kendrick is basically one A and B. Right or wrong. Only because, not because of skill, but because of celebrity. Drake is a international superstar. He, he he spans more than just hip hop. That's why I was getting ready to say, if we doing a rapper yeah. ranking, that's one thing, but his shit supersedes just yeah, we're not talking about just, hip hop. Yeah, yeah. His he got is so many hits and yeah. different genres yeah. and shit, yeah. He got Afro beats, he can sing, he got, it's, you know, that's, that's not just hip hop. So unfortunately, it is almost like, it would be like uh, if a woman was fighting, a, if a, a butch woman was fighting a skinny dude. The skinny dude ain't supposed to lose because he's a man. Right. <laughs> but you don't get no cool points if you knock a bitch out. <laughs> so uh, yeah, you're right. So you kind of in a rock and a hard place. Do I go in on Kendrick? But nigga, you the superstar. I mean, Kendrick is a superstar as well. But he's a superstar as far as it spans genres. Why everybody want to go with Drake for, man? Because he the top. Nah, that must be it, cause like, they say even Future and Drake got static now, and they oh. done did so much music together. Yeah, His last album music. had a song called "What Would Pluto Do." Yeah, now Future. all of a sudden they got static. I'm like, where? Like, so I, I feel like niggas just get do. bored, and they just <laughs> yeah. know. If they I think I was talking money. about such and such, and the more blogs gonna post it, just more people gonna tune in to see what I said about. So, all right, bro. Before we get to that next question, you said what was if you had to rank them three. It goes Drake, for me, it goes Drake, Cole, Kendrick. And this ain't off rapping ability. This is No, no, no. This is just off of their... Of yeah, 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 yeah. No, rapping ability, I think Cole is better than both of them. But just star power and who they are in the, the spectrum of music. But that's fine. It's going to be a lot of disagreements in the fuck. comments. Right? That's yeah. fine. <laughs> disagree with me. We can discuss it. Subscribe to the tribe, Yes, please man. do. Drop like, it comment, in the comments. Subscribe. But it good. goes, to me, superstardom, blah, blah, blah. It goes Drake. And then Cole and Kendrick is the same. It's interchangeable, but for me, preferably Cole and Kendrick. That's me. Who, who you got? It's tough to it's tough to rank them three because I'm a fan of all three, bro. I am too. Drake, one of my favorite artists. I say artist, period. Yeah. Um, Kendrick, I'm a huge fan of Kendrick. I wasn't at first. Really? I, I think we said that on episode yeah, one. When I first heard about, Good Kid, Mad on. City, yeah. I ain't really I ain't understand either. it at first, but it kind of grew on me. Then after that, yeah, been following this catalog. I had a homie that was on him heavy, so he put me on a lot of the, the go-to songs. Yeah, that I was like, and then okay, once you blend I them together, it. you're like, okay, this shit all. Yeah. Okay, so, and then I end up, my son, middle name, Kendra, after Kendra Lamar. So this is oh, how much I rock with dude. I ain't mad at that. Just to give context <laughs> yeah. to it before you I. You really fuck with him, yeah. But then J. Cole. Super cold, no pun intended. But you don't listen to him like that? I do. Oh, okay. Like I said, I went to see him in concert. It's one of my favorite experiences ever. about Dreamville, yeah. Yeah. Um, I done had some people say I look like dude. I don't see it, but I done had, nah, you like I done had some people say me and dude looking like I feel like nah. I done got compared to them to everybody like skin. Because he light skin. I done got but, that same um, dumb ass shit Yeah, too. you know, anybody yeah. light skin, you look like... Harry Bella funny. Movie like, bro, <laughs> I ain't got the waves, the perm, none of that shit. <laughs> what the fuck? Nah, but, uh. <laughs> Splash Brothers. Nah, man. I, I appreciate Cole on a different level because, unlike the mother two, he's a producer. Yeah. He had made a lot of the beats yeah. in his catalog, like some yeah. whole albums that yeah. he did. So, yeah. he got that notch above them two. And I like that. We're just talking about all around, just talented. If you in the car and you seen all, say you open, you got Spotify? Yeah. So if you open Spotify and they was all coincidentally. Fuck Spotify though. Pay your artists. <laughs> Amen. <right. laughs> so if you had all three popped up right now, which one are you pressing first? Not the song, which artist you going to? If all three of them dropped on the same day, which one I'm gonna no. first? Well that's fine, yeah. And they all dropped on the same day, which one are you going to probably drink? Say it ain't so. Most likely I'm gonna <sighs> Don't you say Drake? You going to Drake. 
Normally, I would say Drake right off the bat, right? But just judging off of Drake's last few releases, they've been regular. I'm more so inclined to hear how Cole been coming so crazy hey, lately. Team Cole in this bitch. Cole with like, the feature run he been on Dream for him. years Dream now. Dream, baby. And just like, man, nah. He been linking with artists that you wouldn't even think yeah, these niggas really could be on the song him, yeah. together. And like, Teamville, Dreamville, baby. Uh, if, if they all drop the day first, I'm going to listen to their Cole first. Okay, then who? After that. Probably Drake, and then probably Kendrick. But that ain't no disrespect to Kendrick, though, that <laughs> I really like. I'm a super fan of Kendrick, and I don't want to downplay how much I fuck with Kendrick. Like, okay. I respect his Wait, whole... Drake ain't up here, I don't think we got no Drake project up there, bro. Oh. Yeah, well, he be out. <laughs> I think when we was talking about which one, I think you had to take care of something on there, but I don't think it made it. Year bro. two, we're going to add some more to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Right now, this is what we got. It was too many albums to fit right Yeah, up, pretty much. Uh, I make a small and we add some more. But yeah, if I had to, I guess I'm gonna go right now today. Yeah, I'm gonna go cold. Okay. Rapping ability, cold Kendrick Drake. But okay, if, I, if I'm going the order I would listen to, they all drop today. Cold Drake Kendrick. Okay. Shout out to all of them, man. Hey. It does bring a little excitement just the sport of hey, who yeah. really like that with they pen? Hey. Everybody get give the Drake the hell about the whole. Mm -hmm. It ain't really his pen thing. Uh, I don't know what he's has written and what he having, but I do know yes, that man. after those last couple um, underwhelming releases that Drake did, yeah. you know, he added that little EP part that uh, he added like six songs to the last album and put it out as like the deluxe. It was called Scary Hours or some shit. Oh, yeah. What would you think about that? No, he wrapped his ass off on them. See, right? that's my thing. He had a point to prove. Like, I still got these well, why in the tub. he take these rapping ass songs and be like, Man, don't I'm going to hold on to these bitches. put the push behind them. He put the, the uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, which he can sing, obviously, yeah. but nigga. Nah, because it's a sector of your fan base they that want that, that ass Drake. Yes. They want that motherfucker. And he won't give us no full album. Nah. You oh, think, oh, a side note, you think Drake got a classic album? Honestly. Album, no. Project, yes. Ain't that the same thing? No. What's the difference between a project and album? Mixtapes, something that they call mixtapes. Uh, his first, the one that really put him on. Nah, that's what a lot of people gonna say. I'm gonna say if you reading this, it's too late. With future? Nah, not no future. Um, that's the one that he put out. It was mostly solo song, but the artwork nah, looked like future. the artwork looked like it's the scribbles. motherfucking uh. Chick oh, that's the one that's all rapping. Yeah, well, mostly. Yeah, rapping. it was all rapping. It wasn't yeah. none of that sangy shit. I that got in. No, he, had he got future. a lot of yeah, yeah, yeah. Got a He ain't like that. Say he didn't say he didn't write a few of those songs. Either I'm way, just saying, sir. If he had an all around project that was like that, to me that was it. I like nothing was the same as far as the album. That was my favorite. That's the light blue cover, right? Yeah, the one with the okay, side yeah, profile yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. my favorite one as far as the albums. But if I say if he was to have a classic project, I would say if you're reading this. Is really? Like, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people shitted on that What a Time to Be Alive collab with Drake shit that you was just talking about. I like that one. I like that one. But a lot of people shitted on that at the time. But it do, because it sounds like a bunch of future songs with Drake features. It do. It do. I agree with that. It sounds like two Drake songs on there and the rest of yeah. those future songs that they put Drake on. If I say Drake got a classic album, I don't think he has. I don't think he has a classic project or an album. But to me, the closest thing to him having a classic would probably be Take Care. That's what most people are going to say. I like it. It was that shit was just too slow singy for me, man. But see, he would come in with the singing then. And they say a lot of them songs with the weekend that he gave yeah, to Drake. Yeah, but I, I t but see to me, in my opinion, when the whole Drake I, I got a ghostwriter blah 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 happened, the reason why I was personally disappointed because people were like, what's the difference between the singers getting their songs wrote? The difference is singing in itself is a talent. You might can't write a singing song, but you can sing the fuck out of something somebody else writes. Yo. Rapping is supposed to be your skill, not yeah. that's your pen. Mm. A lot of people might disagree. I think it's the truth. What you write as for, that's supposed to be your experience, or at least your like Ice Cube saying he wasn't no game banger, but he wrote about what he saw around him. So if you're a rapper, you're supposed to write your own shit because that was that's supposed to be your thoughts and words. Rapping is a talent, even though it's not singing. Singing itself is a talent. So nobody's helping you sing. Somebody's just writing what you should sing. You ain't supposed to be rapping other people's shit. Just imagine. While I'm inclined to agree with you, yes, sir. it's a lot of successful ghostwriters. Oh, absolutely. That in the rap. In rap. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're like, hey, 
I don't got no hit songs under my belt, but I'm a part of a lot of hit songs that y'all yeah. saying y'all don't that know be, them them some rapping ass niggas. Yeah. Can you think about, have you heard the songs that, that uh, what's the nigga named, Quentin? Quentin Miller. That Quentin Miller wrote, or allegedly wrote for Yeah, Jerry. I've heard his own songs. It don't he, sound as good. He put out. It don't hit the same. No, nah, it don't. And some it some don't. of it is voice, some of it is your Delivery your goes a long way. Yeah. yeah. So this. I do understand there's factors that go into rapping, not just having a dope pen. But I just... I'm not to rehash the old yeah, shit. Yeah, some niggas that got the super dope pen, but and they can never put the whole yeah, package they together. They look stupid. To make you buy into it. Stupid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nah, so, that's a fact. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, man. So, hi. Right. We spoke on Kendrick shots at them. Yes, sir. We spoke on if you expect them to respond. We gave our ranks for them three. Mm -hmm. Rank them three in the comments, man. Tell us what y'all think. And subscribe yeah. to the tribe. And subscribe to the tribe. All right, so, mm -hmm. in that vein, Yes, I, don't, I wouldn't necessarily call that a rap beef. That's more so competitive shots. For yeah, because they don't really dislike all the niggas yeah. that's trying to be the best. Yeah. But is rap beefs or just dissing another artist in rap? Is that still exciting, entertaining for us, for you personally, or is that kind of getting played out in 2024? I think it depends on the type of artist they are. I think, and I'm not saying every nigga that rap is gangster, but if you really, if you got re real beef, I think you got to be kind of a more thugged out ass rapper. Yo. To me, when Drake got beef, that's that's soft. Mm -hmm. No offense to him, but it is. He ain't no thug guy dude, nah. and he don't claim to be no thug guy dude. So I think when it comes, I needed to have a hint of potential violence without real violence. I think you need to be, you have to be the type of rapper or artist where I think you just might shoot that motherfucking club up. And if you ain't, at least the niggas around you might. You know what I mean? Versus... I do want to say Drake wasn't that for the longest, but the last couple of albums, he is a lot of talk about sliding and bodies and wipe nose and all this because <laughs> I'm like, damn, when did Drake transition into one of these? Like, the nigga drilling hey, now? That's like, your boy. <laughs> that nigga is R&B drilling hey. on there, bro. <laughs> I just wanted to, cause he didn't. That never was. He also was Drake to say this. Me and you never hear a reply. And now you gonna hear a reply every damn time, no matter how. Not everybody though. Like, I, you know what's funny? I like the best line against Drake in my... I think it's what Common said. That shit was simple, regular to the motherfucker. What'd he say? He said something, something, something. He said, nigga, you Canada's dry. Like the ginger ale. Yeah, that shit was kind of smooth. It's old. I feel like you people get pushed. I feel like people get pushed too much. Common. I know, I'm just saying oh, pushed. Yeah. I feel like people get pushed too much credit in that little back and forth. Huh. Like, I just feel like, like we were just saying about the Kendrick verse, if you go and break down just the quality of the raps in that verse, it wasn't that impressive. It was it's just the whole package that they put together of the disc, the cover art, the exposing of the kid. That made the shit seem harder than it was. It made it hit harder. But, but don't that apply to Drake when he went at Meek? That Toronto versus Philly when the old boy hit the home run, that was the picture and all that shit too now. No, then he when hit, you go back to them, them songs, <laughs> they're about the day. They're back to back, it's still about the day. Yeah, they didn't cuss. It was yeah. a very courteous dis yeah, dis. Yeah, <laughs> that's still a bop today. Oh yeah, so. I play that bit now. I'm yeah. saying if we're just talking about whether well, going back and just grading the raps of it. Mm -hmm. If this wasn't a diss, but I'm just grading the quality of the rap. And it was a club song. See, so Meek had to hear that bitch. Yeah. Like how you be in the club? That pussy shit got no replay value, bro. That's a Jay Z beat. Nah, cause Jay Z just is they played. No, what I'm saying, but that's Jay Z's beat for the uh, the OJ story. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he didn't even have an original beat. You did it on Jay Z's beat, and then I don't know. I just feel like that shit was overhyped, man. Really? Yeah. I enjoyed it, but I think Pusher Pusher's pen is better than Drake's for rapping. I don't. Really? Not at all. Who y'all think is a better pen? Not, Not at all. famous. Not at all. So you think Pusher's pen is trash? No. I ain't gonna say all that. I ain't gonna say it's trash, but I, when Drake is in his rap bag. If okay. it's him writing it cool, if it ain't him cool, it still <laughs> so sounds better than what the is output better than Pusher's pen. <laughs> his team, the team that's packaging the rappy rap songs for Drake, they, they, nice. they doing it better than the team that's doing <laughs> Pusher shit. It. That's what I feel. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Yeah. All right, so me, I still get excited mm -hmm. like every other fan just because we come from them eras. Yeah. But at the same time, when it, we know it ain't no real problems, it kind of just feel gimmicky. Kind of yeah, feel like a sales tactic. Out, man, yeah. yeah. And it just come off corny in, in certain instances. But okay. at the same time, I'm interested to see how them guys respond. I think Cole got something that's going to make out. Because really, when you ask most people, they're going to say, Kendrick, man, ain't, ain't near one of them got nothing. But I, I feel like people don't respect Cole as much as they should. They're supposed to. They should. Cause yeah. He really like that, yeah. bro. He Cole really is really is. like that, bro. I don't know if it's a, I don't know what it Cole is. Cole World. 
I don't know if he's too humble about it. You know, Cole, they say he ride a bike around the city. He's he not flashy. He ain't No, he the- did an album re- release. I can't remember if it was the last album. I think it was KOD. If I'm not mistaken. Mm. Or it might have been the one before that. He was riding around the city on a bike and, like, would give you his earbuds. You can mm. listen to the album. Yeah. Like, I think his rollouts be dope. Like, he did Forestville yeah. Drive and he bought the house that he grew up in mm. and he did basically made it like a museum. Mm. You can go in there and the music was just playing throughout the house. You can just look at different memorabilia. I thought that was fire. That is. Yeah. That's hard. I think that's tough. That's dope. Dope marketing. Yes, sir. So, I mean. So, yeah. I feel like it's kind of played out, man, but at the same time, it still works as far as. Garnering attention to yo. So, what's the most entertaining rap beef in in your recent memory? Recent memory, I think I don't. I wouldn't say it's the best, but I enjoyed it. Is shit. I hate to say it. I think the Drake and Pusha was cool because I remember Drake going on the shop LeBron shit. Mm. He was like, man, I didn't want y'all to be disappointed in me and blah, blah, blah. My like, nigga, you were the biggest super <laughs> nigga. Why the fuck you in here goddamn explaining yourself to LeBron right. like this nigga is a goddamn Suge? <laughs> Why you explaining right. yourself to yeah. Suge Knight? He played basketball. So, uh, but as far as the the best laughs and the memes and all that shit, probably Drake and Meek. Because Meek took too long to respond. Drake was on his ass. Like, that nigga, he said, is that a world tour? Your girl's tour? Like, uh, and the truth, what, and the shit he was saying was the truth. And it wasn't disrespectful. Like really, it was, it was like questions and curiosity that was like the truth. Yeah. I would never want nobody to be like, "This your car, or your girl's car." Like right, that don't right, feel right. good. Nah, you know what I mean? Not as a <laughs> I'm trying to think. Recent memory beats besides that's the first one that was like the most popular. Right? Yeah. And it lasted for a minute. Man, no. R.I.P. Young Dolph. Man, Young Dolph versus. Yo Gotti and CMG was kind of entertaining. Hey, you big head motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do you think it had to dog, reach? Man. Like, it, like, these, like the, I mean, Drake is Drake, but I'm just saying. What? Nah, I ain't talking about what was the most impactful. I just oh, meant, okay. like, as far as entertaining. Yeah. That shit was entertaining as hell, bro. He had the music video where the niggas probably be playing Yo Gotti. He found the most big head nigga in the world. <laughs> playing nigga like, yeah. <laughs> I, nah, your guy is back in the day was funny too though against three six. You know yeah, that one? Yeah, yeah. He said, yeah. what he say? He said, three six, what up? Well fuck you. Well fuck you. <laughs> so damn, okay. That well, was good. Man, I was trying to think recently. The Tupac and Biggie was good, but we was kids then. I ain't so really good. too much get uh followed a young boy and Lil Dirk now. I don't really get that man, shit. That's that's for the young folks. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Um a little past my prime. We already spoke, I think, previously on the previous episode about the Nikki and her various beef, Nikki and Cardi. I don't get they beef. I don't either. I don't really it's know. It's just about from, just yeah. the whole. It's, it can only be one, one, and one, one, one running rap, rap. Yeah. Uh, who else, man? Recent years. Uh-huh. Who else? That's the only ones I got. Recent Gucci yeah. Mane versus Jeezy. That, that ain't old, recent. Though. Yeah, that's from Icy, and then it carried over to the verses. So I, I mean, hmm, Young Thug versus Wife and Lucci. So I don't really know what they be. I don't, I wasn't hip on that one. That's all good. Okay, man. See how we look mellow? That's how these beats be. As, <laughs> as far as the raps that came out of it, nah, them niggas ain't. Who else, man? Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think I of something. I think it was like Benny the Butcher versus Freddie Gibbs, something. See, I, I hate to say it. I like Benny the Butcher. I do listen to his music. I don't listen to Freddie Gibbs. And so I because they're they're not indie, but they still give indie energy. Mm-hmm. T.I. versus Shawty Low. Oh, that, that be what took. Remember that Ooh, one? <laughs> he shot that shit in front of me. It was shot coming from both sides. The nigga, man. it was on it. Hey, T.I. Hey. versus Shawty Low. That was an underrated one. T.I. versus Flip. Oh, and shit. And he hit the nigga with the picture on the man. front looking like the, lucky, uh, the leprechaun from Lucky Charm. That Lucky's was Charm. one. That T.I. That versus tough. Flip, man. Mm. Damn, who else, man? Fucking. Of our generation. I'm trying to think who else had a good beef. <laughs> Hmm, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. Why ain't nobody really winning with Lil Wayne? I was about to say, Lil Wayne is somebody, man, with Pusha T is the only one that really, it was Lil Wayne and Pusha done did it back and forth. But that was only because I think Kanye said something just, spread. One, Kanye or, or Wayne said something one to the other, and Pusha was just sticking up for Kanye. It wasn't even like a real, yeah. you know what I mean? It wasn't no real personal beef. Uh, let me see. I can't think. I'm, I know it's more that I'm going to think of after the fact. I know, right? Like, damn. Right here in the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to go my letter. 
I don't know, man. Fuck them. Fuck them. <laughs> we gonna go to the next topic, man. Fuck a rap beef. Yeah. Y'all niggas just make no dope songs, man. Yeah. You got to mention another nigga in your song to make people care about your music. <laughs> shit, you might not really be like that, bro. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got to mention that other person in my shit for people to get excited that I'm dropping new music. Yeah. It's just gonna, gonna be dope vibes on there. You know if it's every time I get ready to drop, who can I name dropping this bitch? Right. Everybody gonna dude. run and see what I said about such and such. Like, it's and a corny a problem, element to yeah. that. You know what I mean? Because if you can't move units on your own, I ain't really trying to hear this shit. All right. Yes, sir. We still currently in the culture. Uh -huh. This is still episode three of a tribe called Culture. Subscribe to the tribe. You know what's going on. Yes, sir. All right. So we mentioned on the previous episode about all the the black shows yes, that's popular amongst the black community mm -hmm. getting canceled. And suddenly, it was unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. So the latest one for all my power power fans out there, Power Book <sighs> Two Ghosts. So it's the last season, bro. They they canceled, they wrapping it up, man. Yeah. I don't like that. And I looked on stars and from what the trailer says, it's only like a part one and part two. I don't know if it's two long ass episodes. If you did you see that? Nah, I ain't. We look on stars part. it says part one so and part two. They're not even doing the full last I don't season. Know. They, That's what I'm trying to figure out. It don't come bad. on till it ain't coming on for probably two more months. Cause we're on episode Episode three just passed for BMF, and they used to do what, eight episodes or ten. Oh, I couldn't say because I mentioned I don't, I don't follow Power, so. No, I'm saying BMF. How many? Oh, BMF. They normally do eight or ten. I think ten. Okay, well, they don't have, we just finished episode three, so that means hey, we got seven more weeks. So it, it and they usually drop a week or two mm -hmm. after. Yeah. Damn, I don't like that though. And Man. Uh, you see what what got posted though, right? But uh. Uh, my, what's his name? Michael Renner? Rainer? Michael Rainey. Rainey, excuse me. So he Tariq. posted, yeah, Tariq, badass. So he posted, was like, thank you for the run, blah, blah, blah. It's been a great time. Yeah. He like, oh, and suppose he was like, oh, it's a surprise. I didn't know this they was coming. They he found out on Instagram. Yeah, but then 50 wrote back, not wrote back, but like he posted, posted like, nigga, you don't answer your phone. So I don't know if 50 was like, you bullshitting, you, you feeling yourself. He's trolling though, man. He never know. They might not have never told them niggas nothing. If it ain't. <laughs> Fuck it, I'm done with this bullshit. Bitch can't resist the chance to down have an opportunity to troll a motherfucker with But they, they getting money, though. They, they wasn't like no personal shit. Nah, that's why, you know, he's just damn poking fun. Like, he ain't gonna get mad about me saying this. Oh, you, know, you said 50 just, just playing around. Yeah, because mm. he do that. You I feel so? like, yeah. That's but the white dude, the one that played his best friend, why can I not think his fucking name? Um, what's Tyreek's friend in the, in the show? The white dude. I don't watch the show, I can't tell you. <sighs> anyway, he, he's Tommy. <laughs> but no, his his character posted was like, yeah, it's been a great time, great run, or some shit, and he, he seems sincere. I don't know how real it was, yeah. but I'm I'm disappointed it got canceled because it was probably probably their behind Kane Raising Canaan, that's probably their second most popular show of the spot. I thought that one was more popular than Raising Canaan at first, but I guess I, I think Canaan is it done took over. I could uh, be wrong. Shout out to all the fans. Of, uh, damn. Shout out to all the fans. <laughs> shout out to all the fans of the Power Universe, man. I hate to see one of those. Just like we said before, I don't like seeing all these shows no. that the black community care. It ain't a lot that the black community care about. No, nah, it ain't. For us. <laughs> yeah. And when you have something to have a little run and then they cut it short like yeah. that. Like, if you Google it, if you're watching this right now, Google how many black led shows or predominantly Perfect. black cast that are not coming back, that was doing good. It's just like, damn, damn it's the list getting extensive at this point. Now that I'm thinking about it, yeah. It's That's why we got to support our shit when we get these, these shits greenlit and they give us a season. Go watch that shit, bro. It's not, we gonna look up and it ain't nothing representing us on none of these networks or streaming platforms and now we mad because we ain't, you know what I mean? But you ain't supported when it was out. So would you, okay, so what shows have been canceled? Insecure been canceled? Insecure. The original power been canceled. I think they. Well, probably I think Insecure was gonna wrap that up anyway. It was five seasons. I don't think necessarily feel like that was a cancel. No, I think they just ran its course. Yeah, ran its course. Ran its course. Now I'm shit. talking about these shows is like rap shit. Like rap shit two tough. seasons, and you feel Bro, like this shit is getting seasons. lit. Yeah, they we they ain't even make it. Fifty Cent had another show called uh. What was, the, what was that show? It was on fucking uh ABC about the dude, the nigga that was in jail that. Came a lawyer while he was in jail. I heard of it, but for I didn't life. watch it. was called For Life. Was good, that shit was good as hell. It what? had two seasons and they cut it short. Did you ever watch Survivor's Remorse? I heard of it. It was a LeBron show. It yeah. was on 
they know what it was HBO, yeah. And that was, I thought it was good. I think it only had like two, three seasons. That, that bitch got canceled. Um, and that's it. I'm just speaking of current, yeah. more current stuff. I don't know, mm. like, if the, what expectation they having, like, this shit gotta go through the roof or we cutting it. As soon I as mean, it. it's killing most shit. No, we, black people as a community, as a culture, Subscribe to the tribe. Subscribe uh, to the we, tribe. We, we have the most powerful dollar because we spend the most dollars. Mm. But a lot of times, we, I ain't going to get too deep, but we don't put it back into us. We rather but support shows, other yeah. shit than our own, bro. But these shows clearly have the viewership, so I don't really understand why they get canceled. But I don't them. understand either, man. Like I said, I don't get too deep. Shout out to all the black actors and actresses and producers and show creators and stuff. Put us in some shit. Don't get discouraged, man. Keep bringing out a new content. <laughs> they going to catch on eventually, man. Keep doing your thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like he said, put us in something, man. Hey. You need the uh, light-skinned nigga to come through. Splash Brothers. Light-skinned man, glasses. <laughs> Come, <laughs> <laughs> hey man, let me know. We come, we pulling Look, up at the hey, casting cars. Do four seasons, we'll do all four. You, you can cancel after that. Fuck it. <laughs> all right, next topic, man. Yes, sir. So you know we in March. March Madness is going on. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you a basketball fan or if you follow not. college basketball or not. I don't. Call, I don't typically follow college, but continue because I know the okay. topic. Normally, I don't really follow college basketball Is much it? either. I'm more so. Tune in with NBA when I watch mm -hmm. basketball. But I am a Clemson fan. Shout out Clemson. Boo. I do watch Clemson basketball uh, when they on just because I'm a real one. See, a lot of Clemson fans, they only watch football. <laughs> well, they don't give a damn about yeah. no other sport. Because we ain't, ain't like no good in yeah. that. <laughs> they won them couple of uh, football championships. Yeah, now everybody yeah. locked in. Anyway, shout out to them. But <laughs> the topic that I got here is <laughs> women's college basketball. Oh, that shit popping, The dog. level of interest in this. That right, shit this is motherfucking In my popping. life, dog. Yeah, it's popular. Like, not only is it more popular than men's college yeah. basketball, but it might be more exciting to watch than LeBron and them in the NBA. Because we kind of, well, the NBA problem is we don't, most fans, unless you a diehard NBA fan, don't really watch NBA until they get close to the playoffs. Yeah, so we still got probably. Yeah. We, we still get close now. Yeah, we ain't close, but we ain't quite there. By end of April. Yeah, April. yeah that one people, because you guys, it's so many, it's 84 mm -hmm. games. Yeah. I most people ain't watching 84 games plus the playoffs. Yeah. But that women's college, though, I got to say, I was, we was in uh, TGI Fridays uh, a couple weeks ago. It might have been a couple weeks ago. We seen Tennessee. No, not Tennessee. USC versus LSU playing for the mm -hmm. SEC. Yeah, for the conference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. They were going back. I think it was there. No, I'm lying. Whatever it was, old girl from uh, USC. Like it was Carolina and Tennessee the, the day no, before was, the championship. No, but it was old girl from Carolina hit the game winner. Yeah, that was uh, the light skin joint. Yeah, hell yeah, yeah, that was a Tennessee game. That was okay. They were yeah. playing against Tennessee. See, I don't really watch it, but mm -hmm. this was exciting. Yeah, yeah. That she was on, and they had the men's game. I think the men's was UNC Duke. Ask me which one everybody was watching. The girl. Yeah, so, fuck yeah, they you know that shit. And I don't know, really no. know like exactly when that shit happened or what, but I think it's because there's no they're not scrubs, but I think that since probably Zion and and John Morant got drafted, there ain't really been no big name motherfuckers college motherfucking college players that you just be excited about in the mm. men's. <laughs> and on top of that, if you notice, with women's college, their NIL deals are more significant than their women's NBA contract. I, I don't know the numbers per se, but I'm pretty sure your girl uh, from Angel LSU, Reese. Angel Reese, she's making, not multi-million, but she's making a couple million from her NIL deals. I think the highest salary in women's NBA is only like a quarter million. Yeah, they not. So if I can stay in college and make, let's, this is, I don't know what she make, but let's say she make it two million a year from NIL deals. You can make two million per, for the first three, four, two, three years each in college, and then go to the WNBA, or you can be like, you know what? I want to be a professional and slide off at the one. Well, you can't even leave. I don't think you can even go to the women's NBA until two years, is it? I know. In, uh, I'm not so quite sure, but it, 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 you can't do like NBA. Yeah. Like you can't do just one. I think it's either two or three years minimum. Would you rush off to go make a quarter yeah, million? Nah, is that what I'm nah, saying? I can make more in college. Right. So if you stay in college, we get to see your face more. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We see your face more and more and more. You become more familiar, more brand awareness, so to speak. Uh, shit, that's why this shit popping. You get to develop skill-wise. You get to develop your pockets. This is as far as the quality of play, man. I was watching, it's better. I was watching that SEC tournament that you were just yeah. wrestling, man, and seeing these girls in hey, the paint. Hey, huh? Give me that they shit, bitch. really, like, yeah. banging in the paint and shit, like, you seeing, like, the same little technical fouls and yeah. shit. Like, I'm like, hey, these girls ain't playing, yeah, bro. Yeah. Like, 
Nah, man. Hey, shout out to all the ladies out there in the women's basketball renaissance. I love to see it. Yeah. I got a daughter that play basketball, so that's like and real job. encouraging yeah. for her. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's dope. So, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, man. Man, y'all got to step it up, especially at the college level. But even bro, at the NBA, so y'all dry. professionals, bro. It should be no reason at all <laughs> that we rather watch amateur women <laughs> college basketball than the professionals in the NBA making millions. That should not be. Y'all should be able to match the level of yeah. excitement and entertainment. Hell yeah. But, man, so. I'm just saying. And with that being said, the, the team that's the shit that's been the shit for a few years is the gang cause, the lady gang cause. I just oh, mentioned yeah. I'm a Clemson fan, so normally it's fuck everything gang cause. Hey, you gotta get them they love. I gotta get them they love, bro. They, they going State. crazy. They going yeah, crazy. Yeah, they what well, they they lost like three games in three, four years. Man, they, they won the crazy. championship twice once. They coach, ice cold. Yeah, Don Staley. Ooh, man. nice. Shout out Don Staley. You gotta think she the original women's dream team. Yeah. One of the original. I'm just saying members she was on the episode of Martin, bro. When they had what? the women's dream team, remember that oh, episode yeah, yeah. of Martin? He had like he hurt his leg and shit. She was on that guard. I was like, oh shit, that was Don Staley, man. Shout out Don Staley. On top man. of that, check out the women's uh, dream team on Netflix documentary. That bitch tough. I need to check that out. Yeah, it's real good. It's real good. Shout out Don Staley, mm -hmm. the last Don. Wait, I lied. I'm sorry. It's a thirty for thirty. It's on ESPN. Excuse me. I'm gonna check that yeah, out. Yeah, it's the it's the real tough. Women's college basketball going crazy. Yeah, man. man. All right, our last topic. We still currently in the coach. We're wrapping up that uh first segment. Mm -hmm. Meek Mill. Okay. He been in the news a lot lately. For uh, weird stuff. For some normal rap headline stuff. First, did you see the on the radar freestyle? I did. What'd you think of it? I thought, and I probably sound like the hater on every episode we done did. I thought that shit was regular. Thought it was regular. Only because I've seen Meek be even with his after the success, I've seen him really freestyle. I mean, we all know freestyle ain't freestyle like it used to be. Right, right. But we know what a hungry Meek Mill sound like even after the success. Am I wrong? Yeah. I'm wrong. Nah, I'm no. saying, I feel you. Yeah. We know what a <laughs> hungry Meek sound yeah, like. Yeah, he didn't sound hungry. He, I mean, his flow was dope, but he wasn't just even his 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 inflections and his voice sounded lazy. He was just I got a dope flow. I'm just saying, I mean, the beat, I mean, it, it just, oh, yeah. I, I wasn't impressed. I never. You don't fuck with Meek Mill. Meek Mill can rap. I've always hated his voice, his delivery. Really? I always I love Meek Mill, but I ain't even fucking with it. I ain't never really too much been a fan. Even his early shit? Sound. Nah. You know, like, hold up, wait a minute. Y'all know how I will feel? Nah, bop oh, in, God, I was about to say that. When oh, that come yeah. on, you know, even that's, that that's come a classic yeah. song, but most of his stuff. I ain't like how he used to yell a lot back in the day. I don't like his style now that he's evolved too. It kind of seemed like me be trying too hard to make his style blend in with the new wave of the little baby, little dirts and them then. Well, do you want him to yell or you want him to sing? Or, or har harmonize, whatever. I'm just not interested in none of that for him. So what's your favorite Meek Mill song? If I had to, it would probably be that. Damn. Dreams and Nightmare intro. Son of a bitch. Man, yeah. You really don't fuck with nah, me. Nah, I'm really not a Meek <laughs> fan, bro. So I watched that. I seen him do the whole... I did the whole dance routine before it started, and I was like, okay. I, I wasn't feeling it. I said, all right. I didn't like the rap radar freestyle. Like I said, it was just, it was it very wasn't lazy. No Drake. Drake on the radar freestyle, that shit was hard, nigga. Oh, uh, the, blue, the blueberry? Blackberry? No, 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 no. You <laughs> no, talking about the whole, with, yeah. I was fucking with He no. brought the old Blackberry. That bitch was hard, <laughs> I said, bro. We go back <laughs> and watch that Drake on the radar, yeah, and then watch that Meek, and like, yeah, yeah, that shit don't compare. And Meek. Even if it's written, like, but he really can freestyle, like, off the top of the head freestyle. And none of them should be freestyles on them no, platform. No, hell no, hell no. Be prepared, boy. Yeah, yeah, of you course, know I mean? yeah. But I just, I, I didn't feel like he was hungry. That nigga been, what do you say, eating lobster and scrimp? He done been eating too much lobster and scrimp with the seat. I need that nigga to be eating ramen noodles. Me, shit, his content get really competitive. Mm -hmm. And you can say that for most rappers, probably myself also. But his shit is a roly. And damn near every verse is, you know what right. I mean? We pretty much know what you're yeah. with this Your go-to, yeah. yeah. And I kind of just, I want a hungry meek. I feel you. I wasn't so, that impressed. So, he just dropped a project a couple weeks ago. That was probably why he was on a promo run for that. It was called Heathens or something. Like six, seven songs on that bitch, I think. And I didn't like that dumb shit either. You heard it? Yeah, if it was what I think you're talking about. Yeah, it was only been like a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I yeah. checked that out. I checked the one with him and Ross. They did they kind of. Yeah, they I, died. yeah, I didn't like I that. I didn't like that. I didn't like that. And I fuck with Ross catalog yeah. mostly, but I ain't oh, like his that. yeah, Rick Ross catalog is damn near flawless. I didn't fuck with. that. I didn't like the production on that. I can't even think of it because it, it just because it got a picture of both nigga both got on uh, yeah. sunglasses. 
I, Ross is a phenomenal beat picker. The nigga rap just so luxurious. I just didn't like that shit. That one wasn't for me. Man. Yeah, and I really was excited. I thought we were gonna get not literally. You remember Tupac back? Tupac, like yeah. I, I not that. But something, because typically when them two or Ross and a Wale, they hold, they do kind of cross features yeah. with the camp, that shit be tough. Because them niggas put out the lead single for that was Shaq and Kobe. You can't call no song Shaq and Kobe and it don't be a, a song that you want to revisit. Thank you. And then it, I think Remus got, actually got Shaq and Dame on it. Yeah, I saw that. And that was a cool look. How did basketball players got a better verse than you do? Yeah, <laughs> come on now. Y'all do this every day. Now, don't get wrong, Dame is obviously, I think Dame is a dope ass rapper. You fuck with Dame? I really like what Dame do. It's like, he be in that cool, swagged out lyrical. Mm -hmm. like, kind of like yourself, sir. Nah, normally I've never really too much liked the, the athlete that raps. Dame is no, dope. Dame can actually rap. Dame can really get you to zone out into the yeah. song like you just listening to an artist. Right, know? if you didn't know his name, yeah, you'll Dame. forget that yeah. this nigga's a bad player rapper. Yeah. I fuck with him. Yeah, but that, that, I ain't listen to it either, but like I said, I'm not a meat fan, so I'm not going to check for most of this I, shit. I, I did listen to the Raw, Ross and Meat. You ain't going back. Nah, I ain't going yeah, back. I, didn't, I cranked it up on the gym. I said, well, shit, they're going to at least get about three songs with some energy. Yeah. It's Meek. It's Ross. I'm going to you know, listen to that rich nigga shit, and it was regular. It's a no for me, dog. No, your boy used to say that on American Idol. Two thumbs down. It's a no for me, oh, though. Oh, uh, <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Simon. Randy, Randy, it's a no for me, though. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Randy. man. So that wraps up currently in the culture. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, we still in here. Episode three, Tribe Call Culture. Subscribe to the tribe. You know what's going on, man. Hey. All right, hot topics in hip hop. Yes, sir. You gonna sat up and shit? Let me sit up too. Oh, yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> a little more excited. Hot topics in hip hop, man. Yes, sir. All right, so. First week says, man, mm -hmm. they always want to praise somebody for having crazy first week sales. Mm -hmm. They always want to trash you and act like you're irrelevant and okay. all your music is worthless and you've been wasting your time if your first week sales ain't where they supposed to be. Now, obviously, in this today's era, they nothing like they once was. Nah, People ain't nah, selling nah, ain't one million on copies hell, first nah. week and shit like that. Nah. You think anybody could? Like, hell no. Know. Nobody. Not Taylor Swift. Not Nobody is going to sell a million copies first week, bro. I think Beyonce and Taylor Swift could, but in, in the culture rap, no. Not just no, straight up selling records. When they do these, like, bundle oh, packages streams, with yeah, merch, yeah, 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 like, concert yeah. tickets and a t-shirt. T-shirt, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. You can do it with nah, it's not just, just straight music now. No man. Okay, nah, fair enough. Okay, that ain't the thing no more. Okay. So the metrics have changed. Mm -hmm. It's really like you you was considered, considered pretty much a success if you can reach hundred k first week mm. in today's mm. metrics. So do first week sales still mean anything in the streaming era? In your opinion, I ain't even gonna just say in my in real in the real world of of record labels. Yes. Because when you want to get advances, when you want to get deals or you want to re-up your deal, when you, it's, it's almost like, um, I'm th I guess I would say the movie industry. Like when you want to say, hey, I'm an Oscar winning actor, so I, requ I require a minimum of, I don't know, I'm just going to throw a random number out. But they say, say Warner Brothers come to you and say, yo, we want to cast you can Cartier Camo in a movie. You, got, you say, okay, sure. But you do know that I'm... A multi Oscar nominated actor. I've won bet I've won the Oscar for best supporting actor, leading actor, whatever the fuck it is. So you saying those stats help your they, resume for negotiating. Right, yeah, for negotiating forward. money. But as far as your following, which I granted we this is world runs on money. So monetarily, as far as like you said, it's like here's my resume of I've been nominated four or five times for a Grammy or whatever. Mm. I got single of the year or hip hop album of the year, whatever the fuck it is. Those those are like the bullet, the check marks. Right. But as far as al actual album sales and money in your pocket, no. Because you can go number one in a week and you could drop your album when no other rap album comes out or no other mainstream album comes out. You can go you can go number one for selling fifty thousand copies. <laughs> if you drop it on the right, right week. Right. Just be Timing honest. is everything yeah, yeah. now. There's yeah. a lot of people that say, I was getting ready to drop on this date. And, and they move them over. Yeah. Bigger artists and See? Stuff, so they move the hell out of the way. See what I'm saying? So you can you can juxtapose your album based on who else coming out. I guess if I was for me to answer my own question, mm -hmm. it still means something, but it don't mean as much as it used to mean. Right. And it's because it's a different era. The streaming era, people not going out buying these albums no. like they once was. And press play. So it matters, yeah, but it don't because that shouldn't deter you 
Like, first of all, them numbers can be manipulated. Anybody that knows, yeah. if you know, you know. Sir. If the label press that button, you gonna get them first week numbers that's gonna come off as impressive to the... I know on a small scale, for example, how. You ready? <laughs> you wanna mm -hmm. put your on game? Let's go. Sign language and mixtape, right? Mm -hmm. Ask me how much money it made. How much money it made? $11.54. That's the last time I checked. You know what else? I gotta take it off of Spotify. Ask me why. Why? Because one, I'm not gonna say who. I'll tell you what we done. One of the artists that contributed to music paid for plays. For their song. Not the whole album. Their song. And based on Spotify's policy, that bitch got took down. So I have to either re-upload the music. <laughs> I'll just give it a fuck. And if anybody who's contributed to it wants a piece of that $11.54, I think I got a couple dollars in my pocket. I will gladly. I'm just keeping it from here. I got $20 in my pocket. I got more than that, but I will break bread. But no. And you know I didn't put it out for money. Yeah, man. But see what I'm saying? So if somebody on our level can pay for plays, just imagine labels with millions and millions of dollars can do. Right? I would say you can't pay for that. <laughs> There's so much technology and shit these days, bro. They can detect that shit. You yeah. don't get caught. It's going to ruin it for you. Whatever you thought you was going to yeah. hide. It's still on Apple Music, but Spotify's policy is like, nah, bitch. And they took it down. Man. Because I went to look for it when I went to the gym the other day and it wasn't on Spotify. I was like, why the fuck it ain't on there? <laughs> and then I remember I had posted the spot specifically the Spotify link mm. on my Facebook. Mm. Because uh, when I was going to it by myself, it kept going to sign language to mixtape the artist, which is not an artist. But yeah. I was like, maybe I'm typing in wrong. Am I tripping? I clicked the link on my Facebook page. It took me back to it. Said I was like, why the fuck it ain't working? And I uploaded. Remember, I told you I did Distro Kid. Yeah. So when I got home, I typed it up on the laptop. And I'm like, why the fuck it ain't coming up? And it said, your, out, your project has been flagged on Spotify. Something to that effect. Because, your tracks have been taken down. Yes. I'm like, what the yeah. fuck? And it said because, and it showed, I'm, I'll tell you what we get done. It showed that song, the play, the plays had been paid for. Damn. And I just hey, did look, something to celebrate y'all. Artists, we're not going to name whoever you is, <laughs> but y'all to be a damn shame. Listen, we all want to be noticed. Yeah. Definitely invest in yourself, but that pay for artificial streams and shit. That shit ain't ain't no future in it, bro. Don't do that. And I love that learn. artist a whole lot. I enjoy their, I'm not going to say him or her. I enjoy their music. But that really let me know, on a, even on a lower level, what it is. Hey, bro, I ain't mad at nobody that's trying to. I am. The shit ain't even on Spotify no more. Damn, yeah. That's I'm gonna tough. put it back up, but that's I ain't tough. in a rush. You really heard all. I'm on that mixtape, bro. You heard <laughs> all of us. Can't nobody damn search our songs off that mixtape on Spotify because mm -hmm. no you want to damn pad the stats and shit. It was a celebration of artists I've interviewed. Man, listen. <laughs> Hopefully you ain't fuck up the next opportunity for volume two, man. Because I'm doing you know every year for my birthday. Yeah, hopefully you ain't fuck up the next opportunity for the rest of us, man. I'm just saying. So, all right. So, before we get off of this, I had some I didn't mean to go so hard. My nah, nah, nah. <laughs> Damn. See, nah, that's a listen. A lot of people might be watching this. You might be an independent artist and you don't know that that's a thing and that they can detect for such and a thing. And I'm not an artist. I just bro, they enjoy catch music. On. If you paying for fake stats and fake streams mm -hmm. and shit, bro, they going to catch you. They going to pull your shit down. I feel it will hurt. They boy. fuck around and <laughs> any money that you would have made, they reverse that shit yeah. and now you owe them type, man, listen. And it only made, a, at the time, $11.54. And I never put it out for, for money. I just want y'all to get some shine. Yeah. On my little platform. It's hard to generate any dollars. All right, bro. Man, and I'm just saying, hey, shit wild, eh? So, all right. Yes, let, me, let me pull up my references real quick. Oh, I, had some, <laughs> I had some references for this uh this particular topic here. Oh, do you think? All right, so. Like the stats and shit? Or? Nah, I just had French Montana made a comment on this subject. Okay. And then. Um, I'm with it. Fabulous made a post. Let me read the I Fabulous I love post. Fabulous. nigga so nice. Fabulous made a post about yes, this. Fabulous said. Low numbers in first week sales only could be judged in a physical era. Yeah. Everybody is streaming music through DSPs now. That's digital streaming platform. Yes, sir. I'm sure there's a few people who actually buy the project, but not enough to care over streaming anymore. So why is this low sales number narrative still being pushed? I agree because you, you got to think when you bought the album and you took it home, you might not literally, but you could play it a million times in one day. Mm hmm. But. They only gonna get credit for that one set. Yes, but I think when you, in my opinion, when you went out and bought a disc, 
the album, the record, the the cassette tape. You really wanted to hear that shit. Yeah. Versus when you might get it on DSP, you hit play. If you don't really fuck with the first couple songs, fuck that album. Yeah. When you buy it, you you hand out eleven dollars at Best yeah. Buy. I'm gonna listen to this. Yeah, moment. it's an investment. Yeah, and you sit with it longer because you've actually paid out your money. I agree. It's coming from that era, yeah. like when I used to have that damn cover art. Bro, open that mug up. Who produced it? Who through. wrote it? Everything. That shit might fold out yeah, to a poster but, to put on the wall bro, or some shit. Remember the ones they start coming out with? Like the whole album was like cardboard. It was like yeah, double yeah, fold, yeah, yeah, triple yeah, fold. That's how you be dumb, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, how you get one of those? Era, yeah, right? man. I don't have no booklet. Right, so let me find it. Uh, <laughs> My phone. Please say French, oh, French Montana too, right? French has said something about this shit. All uh right. -huh. See what you talking about. Oh, bitch. Oh, here you go. Don't forget to subscribe so to the train. Brainwash this because, like, you know, like every, every, like every year, everybody start popping out with these Spotify numbers. Right. Everybody be like, look how much I did a year. You know what I'm saying? Those Spotify numbers when everybody put them shits up, it's almost like, it's almost like you hustling on the block. And you take the nigga that gave you the G pack or gave you whatever work, right? Mm -hmm. Then you throwing it up on your page like it's yours, right? Not knowing that like 5% of that is yours. You know what I'm saying? So they got all of us chasing that and not even knowing that we just showing stacks that don't even belong to us, that belong to the label. And we all brainwashed is going to have the biggest numbers. It's taking the love out of music. People are not making the music that they love no more. People are chasing those numbers. And how you chase those numbers? You go to rap life. You go to rap caviar. You go to whatever it is. This is what the best songs sound like? I gotta make a song that sounds just like that. That's why every time a number one hit, everybody try to make the beats just like it. This nobody's going. They really. And hold on, let me refer. Let me so I can give them the platform they shout out. They really. And that comes from Ant Hey like Steph. TV like, underscore. Every year, everybody I think that was actually uh, what right. that? Clue like, Radio, DJ year. Clue. Oh, I'm sorry, but DJ Clue okay. Radio. My bad. DJ Clue. This is somebody that reposted okay, that shit. I just wanted to pay credit. Yeah. Yeah. French Montana interview on Clue Radio with DJ Clue is where, where that yes, sir. clip came from. But yeah. So what's your thoughts on it? After um, you heard Fab's take and his take. I agree with him. I mean, I don't know the ends of... I, I can't say, speak for you, but I don't... I know some of it. But only for now, outside looking in. I do understand what he's saying. He's saying you got there, nigga say you're a bird, you bust it down and you you I got this work. But you really, you really only could probably got an onion out of it. Mm. The nigga who who fronted you, he the one. Flexing yeah. them thousands of numbers right. and strings, but it don't mean shit because you right. ain't making no dollars right. off of this shit. I might have got it for seventeen five, as Jeezy would say, but right. realistically, I don't bust out maybe a Q well, I ain't a really no QP in, in bricks, but you know what I'm saying? So saying yeah. all that to say if your if your first week numbers came back twenty K, mm -hmm. they gonna look at you as a flop and try to clown you like this nigga's irrelevant, nobody's checking for but that's you. Not but that's the not case. necessarily yeah. what that means though. Yeah. That just means yo. Yo, um, your industry sales ain't hitting. As far as your level of leverage or influence yeah, yeah. with your label situation might not be yeah. where it's supposed to be. So that's why they're not gonna push the button for your shit to go from twenty k to eighty k to one hundred k. You know what I mean? But that's what goes back to like I said earlier. Some of those those first week sales accolades count because when you ready to re up for your yo. next distro deal, your next album deal, that matters because you can say, yo, I got nominated. Four or five times, mm -hmm. I got, I won this one. Right. But them niggas, if you ain't got none of that, you're like, nigga, you, like you said, man. we friend you a brick. You ain't come back with a whole bird. You know what I mean? Fuck first week said. <laughs> I'm just saying. Hey, make the music you want to make. Create the vibes you want to create. Mm -hmm. Put out the art that you feel should be out there. Don't be trying to like what French just said on that clip. Make a song that sound like the hottest shit that's number one on all the, fuck that shit. Them niggas struck gold. Trying to copy them not necessarily gonna mean you gonna strike gold. Remember when Jesus I mean, made Soul Survival? Akon, everybody wanted a Soul Survival. Yeah. When Rick Ross made Every Damn Hustle, everybody wanted everybody that beat wanted voice. Group, yeah. Group, 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 some yeah. type of screw like sample hook. T.I. made, or T.I. and Swiss made that, um, uh, I'm a, not, no, Cassidy made I'm a Hustler. They made the, uh, and, then, uh, and bring, bring them out, out, bring them out. out. Yeah. And everybody wanted that Jay Z sample. Mm. That, that's for that artist. That's they moment. Yeah. You might get a little bit I of buzz on that monkey see monkey do shit, bro. I mean, but you gotta think when you trying to, especially if you up and coming, you trying to get that that hit. 
I just come from the era where you're supposed to be trying to find that unique sound that they ain't heard. Yes, but you're that's not trying been, to capitalize off the popular shit. That, but how long ago that's been, though, unfortunately? Not, it's been a minute. That's that's what we I'm come saying. from a different era, but I respect yeah. that way more. The nigga I that's trying too. to capture that original unique sound and get fans that way as opposed to shit. I could do the little Dirk style yeah. of rap. I could do it better than Dirk. Nigga, that's corny, bro. <laughs> that's corny as fuck. Like, yeah. All right, man. Yes, sir. That's the rap episode of the first week says. Uh, all mm -hmm. right, so kind of still related to that. Do you feel that the quality of music is declining due to artists chasing those big first week numbers or big streaming numbers, specifically in rap music? I used to think that music, hip hop, is declining. I don't think hip music or hip hop is declining. I think music and hip hop is almost adapting. As we, because as, when we, as we get older and newer, younger individuals come along, what they like is not gonna be what we like. It's just like when our parents and our grandparents, why you listen to that boom boom bullshit? Hey, I can't understand what they're saying, even though we knew all the fucking words. And that just has trickled down to the next generation. We don't understand what. Now, granted, some of it is mumble rap, but yo, <laughs> literally, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Shadow or some young thug shit. Shut one fuck on the tree. Yeah, shut one fuck yeah. on the Can you sneak up? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> speak up. But some of that has just trickled out effect, and then I think some of that. Excuse me. It's just so no. I don't think music. Excuse me, has declined. I think that music has just adapted and morphed for the next generation. Yeah, I guess it's subjective. Depends on who you ask, whether or not you say it's declined. I, I well, like I just said on the last question, I'm inclined to agree with what he's saying. That artists are so worried about not being clowned for them first week numbers and shit mm -hmm. that they are trying to recreate a hit song that's already a hit. They trying to mm -hmm. go and get that popular artist that's topping the charts and get a song with them so hopefully I can make top 10. Like mm -hmm. It is affecting the type of music that they making and whether you feel that it's declining or whatever, it is affecting the way they approach music, the way they approach their rollouts, the lead singles, the numbers and fear of having low first week numbers and looking like a flop in today's era does affect the way that the artists are. I, said, I don't even know if niggas get plaques anymore. I could be wrong. I don't. I think they still get. They post them sometime on Instagram. They get the plaques. I don't think it's as common as it used to be though. Cause they even give plaques to people that ain't the artists. Just a nigga that engineered one song on the album. Well, you did something. You touched go it. Go gold. They get the Dang. whole plaque. I would like that's a plaque. I, know I that's got still none. A thing. Yeah. I ain't, ain't mail plaques in this motherfucker, so, you know, I'm with it. Hey, we're going to have some plaques. We're going to get that YouTube <laughs> plaque in this Hey, song, I'll take any of them shit. This shiny motherfucker. Yes, hey, y'all subscribe so we can put a plaque up in this motherfucker, man. Well, Come we on, had bro. to get two. One for his eyes, one for mine. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll get a guy. Yeah, I cut a, that bitch in half. He can have the real one. I'll get the replica. <laughs> shit still no, i get him. Yeah, shit. I mean, nah. <laughs> All right, so, yeah. Well, we know how we feel about that. So. Yes, sir. All right, last topic we got here. Yes, sir. It's a popular term on the internet, especially in the rap, hip hop culture, mm -hmm. industry plant. You familiar with the term? I am. I've heard it for years. I've heard it for Even years. Even before the so, internet. Yeah. So, you know what it is. You're familiar with yeah. the term. It's somebody that they feel like just came out of nowhere, yeah. didn't organically, you know what I'm saying, grow to the point that they reached, and it was kind of just like planned. Mm -hmm. Somebody put this in the game. They already had the powers that be behind them. A lot of times they try to like, mm -hmm. um, they try to make it seem like this is an independent artist and they really got a backing type mm -hmm. of shit. That's what my understanding of it is. Okay. So I've heard various people be, uh, various artists over the years be accused of being one of them. Mm -hmm. The latest one, the uh, the Sleeper song that I had gave on episode two, the they Four Bats guy, the Four Bats guy. They saying that he an industry plan. They saying that their ah. voice ain't even his. That that's probably an AI voice and a nigga just Milli Vanillian. Oh, and they yeah. saying just because this nigga only got three songs, bro. You can't Dude, find no song insane? from when he went, went. Yeah, you can't find no song from when he was underground. Nothing when he was up and coming. The nigga put out three songs. All of them just went out of here. And he already got a remix. Drake then did a remix to the song that I had put it to sleep. And now they just, since that last episode, it's a remix out with a Drake verse. I'm listening to it. I'm just trying to find my sleeper song for you. Yeah, me. so uh, I ain't even got one yet for myself. But we'll figure that out. It's almost that time. But yeah, so they saying that the dude for Bats is an industry plant. They're like, bro, you ain't gonna come out of nowhere. So? We can't find no old IG from you in middle school. 
It ain't no SoundCloud, no nothing where you ever put music uh, out. Fuck. And like, damn, we ain't even ain't we ain't seeing people that say they remember <coughs> you from. Oh, anybody vouching for them? Yeah, no, like they don't just, no they just popped up out of nowhere. They, Damn. They catch Kanye West. TMZ catch Kanye West one day coming out the shit. They yes, asking sir. them the random paparazzi question. Mm -hmm. So is there any up and coming artist that you're listening to that you think might be up next? And he mentioned that nigga. They said Drake. Drake before he got on the remix, shouted him out on his page. Like yeah, I had, I, a bunch of big name no, A list motherfuckers. Before you mention him and after you mention him, I have. That's the only time I've. I don't, that's it. So that's what they say when they be like that. I ain't never well, heard see, this I, I feel like we might have mentioned her. My only industry plant, I think, is that white girl. They kind of do like um, DeMarco. Marco? They do those stupid ass YouTube interviews. It'd be like dry as fuck. Oh, the one that did the shit with Drake. Like where they be like sitting on the bed. On the bed? Yeah, it's one of the ones, the white girl. They be like sitting on the bed. I thought it was the couch. Well, the one that down. I don't, we might not be talking about two different people. But you know Marco, right? Funny Marco. Yeah, yeah. funny Marco. Yeah. Thank you. So I've been him in real life. I told you that. Or, nah. So I was uh, down at the Revolt Hip Hop. Is he really that awkward in real life? Well, I was there working because, you know, I, I don't talk about my profession on the internet, but I was so, doing my actual gotcha. job. And so he, uh, I was coming out of the staff uh, building, and I guess his manager, his handler, whatever the fuck he was, he like, oh, we better run out of time, so we got to wrap up. But um, on the battery, not the memory card. So he said, hey. Come here real quick. And then I looked and I realized it was funny. Mark, I said, hey, man, I, ain't, ain't, I could tell he looked in my face like, oh, no, he ain't fucking with that. <laughs> and so they just kind of like, okay, no doubt. I just went on about my day. But I, I think just that white, I don't know if industry plans are real. I don't know, man. They be having like these in-depth YouTube pages that done did all their research and digging. Yeah. And they, they be making pretty convincing arguments they be having 20 sometimes. million motherfuckers. And they they just came like, but these niggas got a point, bro. Cause it's like, damn, ain't no way you just pop up out. Like, nigga got forty million listeners right now right. with three songs. Yeah, how do you forty million monthly listeners, bro? Just out of nowhere, like it might be them people who debut, quote unquote, with number one, but they have no music before like, that one six, song. Six nine, nigga, when he came out, he was popping yeah, before fuck that, all that shit went left. Mm -hmm. I feel like that was an industry plant. I agree. Yeah, I feel like motherfuckers designed this shit with he the rainbow gang, aesthetic and all this shit. And that shit, type. they pressed the button and did all the Came gang out. shit. Yeah. Capitalized on how motherfuckers love to see all the gang shit in videos. And that shit was planted to be successful, yeah. I feel like. I think so, too. Because he went to jail, got out, and now he living his best life. Yo, nah, that shit ain't always, it ain't always a successful attempt. It's some people that's, they nephew is, you know, they the nephew of some big figure in the music industry and they think just because that's his nephew <laughs> they done put the bag behind him gave him a cool outfit that we finna insert him in and he gonna go and that shit don't work more often well, than see it. i'm with you because i i everybody be like all you need is a bunch of money behind you nigga if the music suck it don't matter how much money behind you iggy azalea i think that was an industry plant Really? I think she was an industry player oh, at the time. she found the She can play anywhere. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I think that was an industry plant. I think, uh, who else, man? If I just had the industry mm. plant niggas. Mm-hmm. Who you doing? XXX Tentacion, He did. I don't think he no plant. I mean, that's unfortunate. Unfortunately, he had an unfortunate demise, but while he was out, he had a... Super fast that people wasn't sure if that was organic following that made him blow up so quickly. See, the only song I really know from him is the first Spider Man song. Uh the song from the first Spider Man soundtrack, Afraid of the Dark. Well, we ain't really his demographic that he had, but I'm just yeah, saying I'm wrong as <laughs> that's just somebody that it just seemed like it wasn't he was on the mixtape circuit and then he blew up and achieved like we've seen people grow. This thing just dropped the song on SoundCloud and he was out of here. Hey man, I think I ain't a lot saying that that's not possible, right, right. For, but that's organically like happen for people. But it's just with so much music, especially rap, that comes out every day. It's the chances easy, of you yeah. just upload one song with no promotion to SoundCloud and then being out of here, and now all the famous rappers want to get on songs with you. That shit just made people think like this was. I mean, unless Drake just happened to stumble upon your shit that day. Yeah, I don't think that's likely though. Uh, it's been a lot of lot of ones they accused of that over the years, but we're running out of time on the battery, so we're gonna go ahead and wrap this oh, shit up, man. man. <laughs> uh, nah, all right. So that's all the topics we had. That wraps up our hot topics in hip hop. 
Tribe Call Culture. So before we get up out of here, we got to do our indie spotlight. We got to do our sleeper song. Yeah. Now, I don't know if he's indie. I don't. I think he is. Hopefully not an industry plant. The nigga name is Sincerely Suave. Sincerely is spelled your typical way. S-I-N-C-E-R. No, it's a little misspelled. S-I-N. C E R E L Y Suave S U A V and I like a song called Wish. I just found like you know you see the Suave yeah. Wish man. It's you know you let sleep. your music play on Spotify and then some random shit come on. Mm. So he might be famous if he is. My bad, but I don't think he is. Okay. I enjoy his music. I'm not gonna play it right Shout now. Shout out to him, man. That's what Sincerely he looks like. Suave I don't wish. Him, I don't know who the fuck he is, but I like his music for sure. You pretty dope. Shout out to him, man. That's sincerely suave. S U A V. Song called I like. Wish. Alright. That's yeah. what you've been vibing to lately. I have. It's on my cruising playlist. I like to do whoever the fuck I you is. Even got, but I don't know. I've been out of the loop lately. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie to you. Oh yeah, I reached twenty four thousand monthly. So he's not super okay. famous. He indie. But y'all tap into my man. So, yeah, he's, so he's that's the indie songs. spotlight. Yeah. Or just the sleeper song. So that was our sleeper song. Or wait, that was our that was you say that was a combination yeah. sleeper Love song indie and, and the indie sleeper, yeah. indie spotlight. Okay, what you got? Sincerely suave indie spotlight. Y'all go check him Wish. out. Tap in. The song is called Wish that he gave for the sleeper. I wasn't really prepared for my sleep. I'm trying to scroll through right here and see. Man, I've been so locked in working on my own music. Hey, lately, what you man. got coming in? Fuck it. Shit, man. I got the. Uh, I got a new project on the way. I got a new solo project coming, non-negotiable. Okay. Super hype right? about that. I don't got the date just yet, man. But um, it's definitely gonna drop before the summer over. Non-negotiable. Mm -hmm. I got the joint project with my little bro Hoods. He shout out my boy Hoods. Oh, okay. I Oh, yeah, good. man, we uh we got the joint project on the way, the uh, hybrid frequency. Yeah, it's pretty much it's like seven songs. That's the name of a hybrid frequency. Hybrid frequency. Okay. That's what we yeah, just our shit. Y'all check for that. Yeah, check out hybrid frequency. We trying to drop that bitch like shit. I think May, May Hoodsy. like right when the summer. H O O D S I E. H O O D S I E. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's my indie spot. Like I guess we will do too. Ain't my right? my boy Hoodzy, man, go check out Hoodzy. Uh, I've met him. Super cool dude. At Hoodzy official on Instagram. Go follow my boy. Super cool dude, Maybe you man. Guess. Yeah, man. Shit, we I love to get my boy on here. Let him pop his shit, man. Hey. But yeah, we and him got an album on the way. Summertime vibe. So that bitch gonna drop by May. So yeah, man, look out for that. But I'm super excited. Uh, yes, sir. We got a show coming up okay. in April where we gonna debut a couple of them songs to the audience. So uh, I'll give y'all more details on that as we get closer. But yeah, shout out Hizzy, man. And yeah, look out for the Cartier Camo non-negotiable. Cartier Camo with Hizzy on the motherfucking Hybrid Frequency album on the way. Man, we finna go crazy out of 2024, uh, bro. So we got anything else besides subscribe to the trial? Man. Uh, Wanna close it up? Go ahead, bro. All right, well, this is Michael. You hit him with the Michael? Oh, goddamn. Damn, hey, man. fuck it, they got a government today. This is right. Michael. Hi, guys. Hey, this is Michael. Let's kill it. <laughs> Michael, I go by the name of Cameron. This is a job called Cliff. Nah, man. You just run it back. Let's kill it. Tribe Call Culture, episode three. That's a wrap, man. We'll see y'all in episode four. All right, go. Yes, sir. Let's get the fuck out of here.